I think that the people surrounding the president are not telling him the truth. They are either, it's either they've spoken to him and he's not listening or they're telling him lies. There are so many opinions flying around about this Ruga settlement, but Mr. President, I am going to break it down for you in five key points. Number one, Nigerians are scared of the Fulani headsmen. In case you don't know, Global Terrorism Index named them the fourth deadliest terrorist group in the world, and it wasn't for nothing. Last year, they massacred people in numbers. Like, while you were on Twitter condemning the attack, people were dying. Children were becoming orphans. Parents were losing their children. Entire families were being wiped out. And even till date, every other day, you keep hearing that someone died. Someone died because the full and head men attacked. You can as well tell us that you know what, 36 states in Nigeria need to keep their lands for Boko Haram. It sounds exactly the same. The only difference is that Boko Haram is a recognized terror group. While the Fulani headsmen is a terrorist group that, mm, it's, it's like an institu, how do you speak the English again? Institutionalized. In, you know, it's, you get what I mean. Number two, how do we keep rewarding bad behavior in Nigeria? In the militants bomb oil pipeline and we tell them, you know what, don't do that anymore. We'll give you millions of naira. This money that we're giving the militants are not getting to common people. It is only those militants that we gave the money to that will enjoy it. Same is happening with the Fulani headsmen. The Fulani headsmen are committing mass genocide. They are killing people. And the president says that he wants to stop the killing. So his way of stopping the killing is to give them what they want. You want land, you want houses, whatever. We're giving it to you. You know, so what we're saying is uh, an armed robber breaks into a house to steal. And we say to the armed robber, don't worry, don't steal. Anything you want. The police, rather than the police to come and arrest the armed robber, the police will say to the armed robber, you know what, we'll give you houses, we'll give you cars, we'll give you gold, we'll give you anything you want so that you don't steal. That's exactly the same thing with the Fulani headsmen. The president said he's trying to stop the killing. No, if you want to stop the killing, people need to get arrested. People need to be put in jail. They need to know that their actions have consequences. And that way we know that, yeah, you are serious about stopping the killings. You don't stop the killings by giving them everything they want, by rewarding them with lands and houses. You know, they don't have any business killing in the first place. The Fulani headsmen wiped out entire villages because one or two cattle were rustled. So does it mean if someone boggles my shop, I go to the village where I suspect the bugglers are and I kill everybody? And then the government now rewards me by giving me lands and houses. That's exactly what's going on. You're rewarding bad behavior, okay? Number three, it smells of ethnic bias. So are you telling me that nobody in your inner circle told you that, ah, this um, Ruga settlement plan, people are going to say it's because you're Fulani and um, you know, you're also a headsman and probably that's the reason why you have a soft spot for them. Someone should have told you, but probably you were not paying any attention because you know what? You, you, you said that you want to settle them in a place with provision of where they have access to good roads, hospitals, and all of that, you know? On the other hand, what about the people that were displaced through the Fulani headsmen killings? In Benue State, you have over nine IDP camps, and that's just Benue. There are IDP camps in Plateau, in Nasarawa, and so many states of the Federation. BBC recently did a report that one of the women who in the IDP camps is giving birth to her child on the floor because they don't have enough equipment to cater for pregnant women and children. It's gotten to the extent where they are now surviving on non-governmental um, organizations to take care of the needs of people who lost their homes, their means of livelihood, their businesses to the full and the headsmen. No one, the government is not taking adequate care of them. And right here we are trying to build roads, schools, uh, cattle and vet doctors and everything for the full and the headsmen. I don't know whether you were told that number four, land is a very sensitive issue in Nigeria, especially in the East. There is no land that is empty. This gazetted land you're talking about, please, where is it? Because every land belongs to somebody and land issue is very sensitive. So many families in the East have disputes. Most of the disputes, family disputes is over a piece of land. So land is such a sensitive issue that 
I don't know who is going to give you their land to give to cattle. You know, if you want a land, buy the land. Buy the land from the owner. Not that the state government or the federal government will take some so-called gazetted land to give to cattle rearers. You know, and finally, I feel like in a scale of preference, is it really Fulani headsmen and cattle that is really our biggest problem? I really get the fact that we need food security in Nigeria, but should we not be thinking about so many other things? Because I feel like we have so many other problems. Um, so many Nigerians, when they are sick, they cannot even afford oxygen in the hospitals where they are. They don't have lights in some hospitals, you know. So I feel like we need to get our priorities right. Mr. President, you need to be reminded that you are the president of Nigeria and not the president of Qatar Republic. Thank you for watching my channel. My name is Chizoba Adiola. I discuss hot topics every week. Do subscribe. Bye.